Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, one of the greatest scholars, in his book, it's called Al-Fawaid, he said, door of success, the door of tawfiq, has been closed upon some people because of six things. If somebody does not have tawfiq, it's one or more of these six things, or one or more of these six things is the reason for there's no success in his life or in her life. He said, first, being busy and occupied with the ni'mah, with the blessing itself, than being busy with being grateful to the ni'mah. Clear? Being busy with the ni'mah itself, uh, let's take an example. Money, ni'mah, right? Wealth is a blessing. I am being, or I am occupied with the wealth more than I am occupied of thanking Allah for that wealth. More than I am occupied, how can I spend that wealth to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm occupied with my children, whether they are ni'mah, I'm, I'm guaranteeing their future by the, you know, putting them in the school and putting on that, and I am neglecting the way to thank Allah for that ni'mah by teaching them their deen, by teaching them the Arabi, by bringing them with me to the masjid, and so on. How can we be grateful to the ni'mah? We be grateful to the ni'mah with three things. With the heart, with the tongue, and with the actions. If you want to be grateful to any blessing, these are the three ways to be grateful. With the heart, by admitting and confirming and believing that this ni'mah is from Allah. This success that I have, this PhD, this doctorate, this is uh, engineering degree, this house that I have, all this is from Allah. Not because I'm a shrewd businessman, I'm a smart guy, I went to school, my father is rich. No, no, no. I have to admit that this ni'mah is from Allah Azza wa Jal. I was able to attend Fajr today, not because I have a car or my alarm went off. No, because Allah wants me to come to attend Fajr. This is a ni'mah. I have to admit that this guidance that I believe in Allah, that I am a muwahid, this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. He chose me from all these millions to guide me. This is from Allah. This is how I thank the ni'mah with the heart. With the tongue, obviously, by constantly, alhamdulillah, you know, thanking Allah Azza wa Jal by mentioning the ni'mah, by showing the ni'mah. And third, which is very important, not to use the ni'mah with what does not please the mun'im. Not to use the blessing with something that is not pleasing to the one who blessed you with it. This is one of the ways to thank that ni'mah. To use the ni'mah in the service of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah blessed me with these eyes. Many people are deprived from vision. I use this ni'mah for the service of Allah, I do not use it to disobey Allah by watching haram and looking at haram. So number one, he said, being busy with the ni'mah than being grateful about, uh, to the ni'mah. Second, he said, acquiring a lot of ilm without amal. Acquiring a lot of knowledge without acting upon it. Durus, halakas, seminars, lectures, khutbas, conferences, everywhere. Show me. <laughs> Put it to action. And did you notice now? Uh, how was the conference, brother? Oh, mashallah, the bazaar. Amazing, ya akhi. Such a beautiful bazaar. Everybody, la ilaha illallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, bazaar is good. <laughs> but this is what you went for, for the bazaar. <laughs> Those shiukh are preparing and they're putting all their effort so you can benefit. And they're giving us all this information and this uh, knowledge. We get a lot of knowledge. We memorize the Quran. We don't put it into action. 
We memorize the Bukhari, we memorize this hadith, we memorize the dua, we do not put it into action. We are so involved in acquiring the knowledge, but there's no amal. There's no amal. That's the second one. Third, rushing to commit a sin and delaying the repentance. We are in general, ya akhwan, people who sin. And we fall into sin. And the believer is the one who rushes to repent after they commit a sin. We all commit sins, ya akhwan. Do not let the sins stop you from coming to Allah Azza wa Jal. We are all sinners. But the trick is to rush to repent. Brother, why you only pray Jum'ah? Insha'Allah, Ramadan, I'm going to start praying on, on time or praying all five salawat. He is leaving the salat, the five daily salat, is a major sin. And delaying the repentance till Ramadan, ya akhi, who guaranteed you you're going to live to Ramadan? When I get married, when I graduate, when I have children, always delaying the tawbah, delaying the repentance. And we have mentioned last week that <laughs> we buried three people, three years old, 14 years old, and 25 years old in one week. So it's not about you being young. The repentance and wallahi, a tawbah, one of the greatest blessings that Allah gave us is the blessing of that there is something called tawbah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? There's no tawbah. You sinned. You're done. Khalas. <laughs> Can you imagine that the tawbah is only in Mecca? If I have to repent, Allah ya shabab, where are you going? Wallahi, I'm going to Mecca to repent. It's only in Mecca. Or the tawbah is only at 3 a.m. What if I die before that? Subhanallah, the tawbah is all the time. The door is open until the soul gets up to here. So rushing to commit sins and delaying the tawbah. Fourth, being proud you are friends with the righteous and not imitating them. You know Sheikh so-and-so? I got his number. Picture with him. I know him. Very, like this. Want me to call him? I can call him now. And? <laughs> Show me. Look at the Sheikh. He's, mashallah, he's amazing. Great brother. Why don't you imitate him? I've been to his house. He's been to my house. Tayyib. Alhamdulillah, great. Imitate that sheikh. Imitate those righteous brothers that Allah blessed you with. You saw that the brother is treating his, his wife with respect and with honor. Go ahead. Imitate him in that. Fifth. Rushing, running after dunya. And dunya running away from us. This, this one is very common and prevalent. So involved in dunya matters, knowing for a fact that the dunya is running away from us. You know the story, uh, a man, a young man came to his father, he said, Baba, I want to marry this girl. So the, girl, the father was happy, he said, let's go. So when the father saw the girl, he said, no, 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 this is not good for you, this is good for people better than you, I'm going to marry her. So they start fighting. He said, let's go to the police. They went to the police. What's going on? He said, they told them what's happening. He said, let's see the girl. The police said, no, no, this is for me. It's such a beautiful girl. It's amazing. No, the police fight. They went to the mayor. The mayor said, this girl is for me. Long story short, the girl said, you know what? Stop fighting. I'm going to run. And whosoever catches me, he will get me. So she started running and everybody's running. And then while they're running, they get exhausted and they fell and they all perished. they all exhausted, done. She stood up and said, I am the dunya. And you're all running after me. You're not going to catch me. Who do you know that is, who told you that, ah, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I am done. I got it all. I am satisfied. Have you ever met somebody? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, the son of Adam, if he has a valley of gold, what happened? He will wish for another. And the, the continuation of the hadith, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, and nothing fills the mouth 
or the soul of a human being illa except at turab dirt when he's in the grave this is the only time he's satisfied because he cannot do any but otherwise he continue running after the dunya and the last one is the akhirah is running to us and we are running away from it and sometimes when you're in a gathering and you mention death Ya Akhwan, we prayed Janazah, Ya Akhwan, remember Allah, Ya Akhwan, look at the Qabr, Ya Akhwan. Uh, leave us alone, Ya Akhi. Every time we see you, every time we sit down, you mention death. Your beloved and our beloved, alayhi salatu was salam, what did he say? Akthiru. Mention death a lot. Mention death a lot. As a matter of fact, listen to this ayah in Surah Al-Zumar. I want to finish quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about a certain group of people. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ شْمَأَزَّتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Allah said there are a group of people when you mention Allah they are disgusted Shma'azza in Arabic disgusted look at this word Allah used Shma'azza Qulub the hearts of the people who do not believe in the Akhirah huh? the, the, the hearts of the people who say that this is our, our, our Jannah this is our Dunya this is it huh? they get disgusted وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ Let's discuss cars, bitcoin, stocks, real estate. إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Allah Akbar, this is the topic we want to discuss. يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Bushra. They're very happy. They're very excited. Allah mentioned that. So, we don't want the door of tawfiq to be closed, ya akhwan. So we want to stay away from all these things. We want to be from the people who are constantly thanking Allah for their blessing. We want to be from the people who learn and apply. When we ask Allah to give us ilm, make me from the people who know and apply. When we want to be in the company of the righteous, let's try to imitate them. Let's try to imitate them. And Ya Akhwan, similarly, Take from the dunya what you need and concentrate on the akhirah. What's happening, Ya Akhwan? This is a statement that I repeated many times and I love to repeat it because it's so true. We are so busy with what is guaranteed and we are neglecting what's not guaranteed. We are so busy with the rizq, with the sustenance, which Allah has guaranteed 100%. All you have to do is make that effort. And the Jannah, which is not guaranteed, <laughs> we are not doing as much. May Allah make us from the people of the Akhirah. May Allah protect us from any evil. May Allah make our last deeds, our best deeds, and our last words, La ilaha illallah.